Jack Cruz talked with Devon Woodland, president of the NFO. The scene was one of the meetings called for the professional staff of National Farmers at Columbus, Ohio, and Des Moines, Iowa. These NFO leaders have become convinced that the collapse of land values and the shrinking of farm prices are part of a deliberate pattern. Here's Jack Cruz. Devon, uh, after yesterday and this morning, uh, your impressions of the staff and the attitude you've seen here. Well, of course, Jack, um, we have the largest national staff of any general farm organization, the quality people. It's taken us many years to put this quality of people together, but we now have them. And this is the second meeting we've had. We had one similar to this in Columbus, Ohio. The same caliber of people, the same determination, dedication. They recognize the urgency and the plans we've been talking about, uh, I'm convinced, will be implemented by these people's leadership. The staff members we have here today have really uh, exemplified a positive attitude. And uh, a lot of it, I think, came from your opening speech. You opened this conference on a very positive attitude. You hit the nail right on the head. Uh, we have to uh, amass people. It's a people movement to save agriculture. Do you believe that in the next 30 to 60, 90 days, uh, we can't amass enough to have the many conferences, a minimum of five and possibly more, but uh, we're going to have to take some very aggressive action in the organization. Uh, we do have responsibility of leadership for agriculture, and uh, the time is right. There's no question but what uh, the finest hour uh, of NFO is here uh, to accomplish the total purpose of our existence, and that's to help farmers uh, cash flow their farms, and our programs are designed to do that. Uh, we have really uh, the only alternative to the existing structure in the country. Uh, there is no alternative, and someone may say, you're going to make it. We don't have a choice. We have to make it. Uh, we have that commitment and that responsibility. These many conventions will really be called cash flow agriculture, is that correct? They'll be uh, structured to uh, cash flow agriculture. Thank you, Devon Woodland. And I've got Arlen Hansen here with me. Arlen is from... South Dakota. He runs the Columbia Collection Point at South Dakota as well as the Hupton Gap Reload. Arlen, uh, would you give us some of your impressions of this leadership conference? Jack, uh, I was really, I've really been impressed uh, with the attitude of the people. I think uh, right now the time is to go out and talk to the people, the, mem the membership, the non-members, the non-participating members. Uh, everybody's in the same situation nationwide as uh, cash flow problems. Uh, well, everybody's looking for an answer, and uh, I think it's time that we take the leadership and go out and talk to these people and get them to understand what we're doing. And I think they're going to be with us and join us and put their production together and price it. As Jack Cruz with Len Brethauer from Kansas. How about the attitude of the Kansas people, Kansas NFO? It's real good. We start setting up coordinators and uh, people to cover the area, and we're going to get that done. Right now, we've got 38 uh, counties pretty well covered and reasonably get another 20 covered uh, in the very near future. People as a whole want to join National Farmers Organization if they know there's a movement out there. And from the way I'm looking at it today, uh, we'll get the job done because we're not going to be alone no more. There's plenty of help over the whole area of the country. Bill Sellhorse from uh, Howells, Nebraska with me. How have you found the situation in the country in the last uh, 30, 60 days? Uh, you're quite active at the Howells Collection Point. The situation is beginning to border on desperation in our area, uh, considering the uh, problems with the lending institutions. Uh, by the same token, I find that the farmers are not necessarily uh, getting in a shell as a result of it. They're getting more of a fighting spirit. Uh, it's amazing me. The, it's amazing to me the people that have come up to me and said, "Hey, the, we we've got to do this thing together, and we just as well get on with it." Devon Woodland uh, set the uh, tone for this meeting. Uh, what were your impressions of his speech when we began this conference, this leadership conference yesterday? Well, Jack, I was very, very happy. Uh, quite frankly, uh, I was elated. Uh, it was the most positive 
the, it was the most positive thing I've heard uh, in the National Farmers Organization in the last six or seven years. The response of the people here is tremendous. This is Jack Cruz with Bill Christensen. He's state president of the state of Minnesota. He's here at this leadership conference with us. Bill, uh, what are your impressions of this conference? I'd say it's one of the better presented informational meetings I've ever attended with the National Farmers Organization at this point, Jack. I felt Devon uh, was very well uh, uh, at this point in time presenting himself to this group. Uh, the seriousness of agriculture uh, at this time as well as motivating these people to go back home and do something about it. I've got Steve Pavich, uh, state of Wisconsin, dairy director for the, uh, that whole region. Steve, uh, what are your impressions of this conference, uh, this leadership conference here in Des Moines? Well, I think it's, it's good from the standpoint of uh, getting all uh, uh, people together uh, outlining a goal that we have to uh, go for, uh, an objective to reach. I got Leroy Reckner with me from Wheaton, Minnesota. Leroy, what are your impressions of this leadership conference here in Des Moines? I think it's been an excellent meeting, very positive attitude about it, and it's just what we need to get things going again. Now, you've been moving a lot of uh, grain out of your area, out of your little office at Wheaton. Uh, are the members happy with the results we're getting up there in Wheaton, Minnesota? Yes, they've been pretty pretty happy with the results we've been getting. We've been getting premiums on short delivery grain and getting it in on time, and it's paid off for the producers. I've got Bob Arndt with us. Bob is uh, head of the Growth and Maintenance Department. Bob, your impressions of the staff, the reaction that you've seen here? Well, Jack, uh, in Ohio and here in Des Moines, I, seen a, I see a, a tremendous uh, working togetherness of the staff. I think the enthusiasm has never been as high as it is at these meetings. I'm pleased. I'm very well pleased. It, uh, I think it surpasses what I even expected. The uh, many conferences, do you have any ideas of what states they'll be in? They're going to be set up according to the activity that we can create in the country following these staff meetings. We may have 10, but we're going to, we're thinking about five right now, and they're going to be scattered around the country so that we get as close to the people that uh, have the desire to make nationwide collective bargaining work, and that's where we're going to put them. I've got Ted straight with me. Ted is putting on uh, part of the uh, training here. Ted, your impressions of what you've seen of the staff here yesterday and today? Absolutely, Jack. I've never seen it better. The, uh, the, the idea of the staff here was they, they had all sorts of ideas in their mind what this meeting was going to be about and everything else, and they have seen this as the first step to actually make collective bargaining rally, and they've got the confidence themselves that I've seen out here. I've never seen them so excited. There's 230 in this room here today, and there were equally that many in Ohio. Uh, do you see a change in our staff uh, in the last four or five years? Oh, definitely, yeah. We've, we've seen a, a tremendous transition in our staff over the four, last four or five years. We've weeded out a lot of staff. We've hired a lot of new young staff. Now, it's amazing we ask how many people have been here uh, for less than two years. In this room, it was uh, about 50%. You know, and the other ones have been here quite a few. In Ohio, uh, there was more of the longevity staff, you know, out in that area from Ohio East, you know, that direction. But the, the quality of staff that we're getting in here and the enthusiasm and the dedication we're bringing back into our staff is what we've needed for a long time. This is Jack Cruz in Des Moines. Staff professionals of the National Farmers Organization met early in June at two locations one in Ohio and one in Iowa. Now, these are the commodity people who organized the supply for NFO contracts, but they weren't talking routine business. They were making plans to cope with the worsening farm crisis. Here is Ed Grass, chief assistant to the president of NFO. Agriculture is in a transition period that we have never before experienced. Plans are in effect to depress land values to a level where a farm will cash flow at less than the drastically low prices being paid to farmers today. Terry Barr last September from the Department of Agriculture stated that U.S. farm prices must be brought down to more realistic levels. This means that all producers who have in the last 10 or 15 years purchased land, equipment, or invested in buildings have very little chance to seek seed in agriculture in the future. This will also eliminate the young farmers from going into business. At another point in his report, Ed Graff talks about what will happen and some options. Well, one of three options are available for farmers today. 
Number one, groups similar to the Family Farm Incorporated scheme will purchase farms and let the present owner-operator continue to operate but as a tenant. This will result in the loss of private ownership of the land. Or number two, the government will raise the money to bail out the farm credit system that is now on the verge of collapse. This will also have the same effect because of the plan to drop land values. This plan will eliminate the producer's ability to retire the debt that he now has. Or number three, the farmers will correct the problem by extracting the needed income from the same place as all good business people do, from the market. And he tells about specific NFO plans. NFO has just completed a national staff meeting. Plans have been activated. A plan to cash flow agriculture will be unveiled to all producers at these meetings for the most massive movement ever experienced in the history of NFO. Ed Groff. Today I'm interviewing Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization. Mr. Woodland has been describing three alternatives. He's been making talks all across the United States in this crisis in agriculture. What three alternatives face farmers and ranchers? They're facing us right now, Phil. We have the Consolidated Family Farm Group who surfaced in Chicago about two years ago. And they have not to give up. They have pulled back to lay their plans more carefully. But that's a group of uh, uh, corporate investors who don't want to farm, but they want to own farmland and then rent or hire farmers as uh, migrant laborers on the, on the land. And that's totally unacceptable because uh, farmers will never have private ownership of land again under now, that concept. That's one alternative, that private investors might take over. Yes, and the other is, is we see the farm credit system that's in trouble. They're struggling for survival. They're on the verge of collapse, and they've gone to the federal government for uh, assistance, financial assistance to protect themselves. Uh, that's probably the least of the two evils at this point, because there is a chance through Congress that uh, farmers can again own land if government gets involved, but it's not a good scenario, uh, because when government gets the land, then they in turn, or become part ownership, partners, with the farm credit system, then they can decide whom they sell to, and it may well be a corporate investor. Yeah, I get your point. The and the credit system itself will become owners. Uh, they will, without a doubt. The Federal Land Bank now, PCA now, is owning equipment. They're owning land. They'll become owners of more as time goes on, unless there's some corrective action taken. And the only third alternative is that farmers must have a price, and even if the farm credit borrows money, they haven't taken a long a range look at because farmers have got to have a price and if farmers had a price uh, what would that do for the farm credit system they wouldn't be in trouble and so uh, the national farmers organization program is the only one virtually the only alternative to the uh, the farm crisis that we're now seeing it's time for action we're going to have meetings for action during the midsummer we have talked about the problem long enough and we're going to go into action and we're going to show farmers how to cash flow their farms. He reported on plans by the entire NFO to put farmers and ranchers in charge of the cash flow problem. This was your county informational tape service for NFO meetings in the month of July. The reports were compiled and edited by Don Mack, director of the NFO broadcast division. I'm Phil Allen. And that for this month is something to think about.